السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله والحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين The verses read by Sheikh Munir were verses of Surah Al-Anbiya and this surah amazingly mentions challenges faced by the prophets of Allah and the fact that they turned to Allah in dua and supplication and Allah allowed them to go through a time he did not need to do that but he allowed them to go through a time when people did not listen to what they had to say yet they were sent by Allah to remind the people and they went to, through struggles at the hands of the very people they were sent to remove from the darkness and bring them to the light. And Allah Almighty says, each one of them called out to us in a specific, unique way. And we responded to each one of them at a point when we knew that it's right to give them what they're asking for, we gave them. Innahum kanu yusari'una fil khayrati. Allah speaks about all the prophets and he said every one of them used to make an effort towards and haste towards doing good deeds, al-khayrat. Khayrat refers to the goodness and all goodness in terms of the worship of Allah and the charities and so on, starting with worshipping Allah alone. You worship your maker alone, and what they did is, they continued to help others, even though people were nasty towards them. Look at Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, just by way of example. When the people of Ta'if had hurled stones at him, and the people of Ta'if had sworn him, they actually injured him when he was given an opportunity to harm them back, he said, Allahum mahdi qawmi fa innahum la ya'lamun. Oh Allah, guide my people because they don't know. They don't know. What don't they know? They don't know what has happened. I have a message from you, O oh Allah. I am your messenger. They are literally throwing stones at me, hurling abuse at me without realizing that they're actually harming a messenger of Allah. But... He made a dua for them. Instead, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam went a step further. When the people he called towards the goodness did not listen to the goodness in Ta'if and harmed him, he complained about his own weakness. He didn't complain about their harshness. He says, Oh Allah, I'm so weak. Allahumma inni ashku ilayk dha'fa quwwati. Oh Allah, I complain to you. The weakness, the fact that I am weak, my own strength is less, it's weak. So imagine he's asking Allah for greater strength to be able to give that message to them in a way that they accept it. Today, my brothers and sisters, do we not have reminders from Allah? Do we not have so many things that happen in our lives? So many things that happen in our lives where Allah Almighty wants us to turn to him. He's tapping us on the shoulder. He wants us to become a better person. He wants us to draw closer to him. He wants us to fulfill our obligations unto him. He wants us to change our bad ways to good ways. And he gives us reminders. We ask Allah when we're in need. And then when we have what Allah's given us, what we've been asking for, at times... We roam around the earth as though we never had a need and as though it was us and us alone and that's it. So Allah sends us reminders and this story or these stories in Surat Al-Anbiya, Allah Almighty mentions one after the other, all of the prophets. This evening's verses, Sheikh Munir started with Ayyub alayhi salam wa Ayyub idh nada rabba. Ayyub, who knows Ayyub in English, how is it said? Sheikh Munir, I didn't ask you, Sheikh. You are the Sheikh. Yes, Job, alayhi salam. Ayyub, alayhi salam, Allah blessed him with so much. Allah blessed him with children, with goodness, with health, with so much. And then suddenly Allah took it away. After years, years. And subhanallah, 
at the beginning when he was tested he didn't want to complain to allah when his wife told him according to one of the narrations that why don't you call out to allah he says i won't complain obviously calling out to allah we all call out to allah i won't complain because allah has blessed me for longer than he took the things away from me i have had blessings for so many years and my test is only so little and wallahi that's the reason why i say to you my brothers my sisters and i've said it every time i remember wallahi my brothers my sisters allah promises you in the quran he says wa in ta'uddu ni'matallahi la tuhsuha if you are to count the favors of allah on you you will never ever be able to count all of them never and the opposite of that is true do you know what that means listen carefully it's a big one if you are to count the difficulties in your life you can count them you can count them that's allah that's the promise of allah allah says the gifts you won't count the hardship you can count all of you think for a moment how many hardships do you have what is the problem in your life i promise you you can say 1 2 3 you can think of things how many hardships you have you can count but what ease you have you will never be able to count don't doesn't allah subhanahu wa ta'ala favor us beyond what we are deserving of people become despondent and turn away from allah simply because they have two challenges in their lives you lost a job the job j o b you lost the job what happened that's the problem i have oh now that's it i'm becoming despondent allah doesn't love me allah doesn't care for me and i'm i'm turning away from astaghfirullah that shouldn't happen you lost a job maybe allah loves you that's why you lost the job because while you were floating in so much of money and in such a job you might have been doing something that might not have been good for you so allah says we want to tap you come closer to us when you shed your first tears crying for a new job those tears are worth more than the entire previous job that you had why because those are warm tears of repentance i'm turning to allah and i'm asking allah's goodness and i'm really i'm starting to worship allah how many of us myself included how many of us have gotten up for tahajjud because we had a problem or an examination haven't we you have an issue i'm going to get up tomorrow morning for tahajjud because i want to cry to allah you say it to yourself and you get up in the morning and you cry to allah and what are you crying about your problem don't you agree if it was your problem that drew you to tahajjud your life should be full of issues don't you think well i don't think so i think we should read tahajjud even without our problems that's the aim let's aim for that to say oh allah when you took something away from me i cried to you but when you blessed me i'm going to worship you even more that's why one of the tests of banu adam is when he has what does he do you have more and more and more you need to develop characteristics number 1 with your wealth you must worship allah you must make sure that that wealth facilitates your visit to the masjid your visit to good things you you go to the sick and ill you visit those perhaps who've suffered some form of a loss give them a good word and you spend that money on the poor in your family and then beyond that in your community and across the globe you reach out with that finance or with that money to others as well not just for yourself innahum kanu yusari'una fil khayrat the prophets of allah used to compete or they used to actually make haste towards khairat good deeds i said it starts off by worshiping allah and it continues to helping people they helped so many people how many stories they are of nabi muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam helping even those who were not believers how many stories are there of people of the ummah or stories of the past where people men and women who were kind to animals as well and what did allah do for them is that not khairat is that not some goodness it's also a part of it then allah says yad'unana they used to make dua to us they used to call out to us allah has the solution to your problem allah owns what you are asking for so ask him allah owns it yad'unana raghaban wa rahaban hoping that we will answer them and rahaban in awe of allah 
Iman is such that we should strike a balance between the fear of the punishment of Allah and the wrath of Allah and hope in His mercy. The correct balance is what Iman is. Because the hadith says, Al-Imanu bayn al-khawfi wal raja You have too much fear in you and no hope, you will lose the path. You have too much hope and no fear, you will lose the path. I spoke earlier at a different venue and I said, the person who commits a sin with the intention that because Allah is so merciful, it's okay for me to do this, I will just say astaghfirullah after that and I'll be fine and good to go, is at a loss. At a loss. Why? You've misunderstood the name of Allah, the qualities of Allah. The hope is there to give you hope, not to encourage you to sin. There we go. May Allah strengthen us. We are all human beings. We all falter and we all... Uh, a work in progress, myself included. I want to improve myself in so many things and every one of us should want to improve ourselves in so many things, be it your five daily prayer, be it your connection with the Quran. I can invite you quickly towards something. Can I invite you towards something really good? I invite you towards reading at least one verse of the Quran a day. Is that not a beautiful invitation? Lovely invitation? Come on guys. Who's accepting the invitation? At least one verse a day. Put up your hands. MashaAllah. Amazing, amazing. So then if it was that good, we can make it two, inshallah. <laughs> Barakallah heikum. Allah bless you and all of us. <laughs> At least once a day, one verse a day, wallahi, it's a beginning. Let me explain to you what would happen. When you sincerely connect with the word of the maker who made you and the rest of the creation, when you sincerely connect with it, wallahi, it is magnetizing, magnetic. It will automatically lead you towards going into it more and more and more. And the same applies to any of these acts of worship, such as salah. If you sincerely pray, you begin to enjoy your ibadah. When you enjoy your worship, it's a sign of the love of Allah for you. One of the signs of the love of Allah is, hey, I'm looking forward to this salah. Salatul Maghrib, I'm really looking forward to it. Why? I'm going to enjoy myself. If you're enjoying yourself, do you think you're just going to stop at the farad? You're going to go beyond the farad until Allah loves you. The hadith says, the most beloved thing to me, Allah is telling us in a hadith Qudsi, is that which I made compulsory. If it was not so beloved to me, I would not have made it compulsory. Then Allah says, my slave continues to become closer to me through the sunnah and the nafil, until I love him. Subhanallah. Until I love him. So you feel that. Allah says, when the prophets called out to us for their issues, they had hope. They also feared. Feared what? So many different things. We fear the wrath of Allah. Imagine a prophet of Allah. It reminds me of the companions of Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. We believe that they were the best to tread the earth after the prophets. Sahaba to Rasulullah sallallahu alaihi wasallam. And they used to be concerned about their own conditions. Umar ibn al-Khattab radiallahu anhu was concerned if his name was from among the hypocrites. And you and I are not even bothered. May Allah forgive me, forgive all of us and grant us Jannah. The idea is let's strengthen ourselves. The prophets of Allah were tested. I told you, Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, he made a dua for Ta'if. He says, oh Allah, guide them, they don't know. Can I ask you, today, you go to Ta'if, from the citizens of that place, how many people do not believe in Allah? By right, all of them accepted Islam. What happened? Wasn't there a time when all of them were harming Nabi Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam? It was the dua. It was the sincerity. When you want something and I want something, turn to Allah. Consider it an honor that Allah has taken something away from you. If that thing brings you closer to Allah. And that brings me to another point. The point is, something negative happens to you. How do you know whether it's a punishment or the mercy of Allah? You desperately want to marry someone and something happens. Every day I receive messages and emails from males and females. <laughs> Every
every day I receive these messages and emails, in all honesty, where they say, you know what, I'd like to get married, I want to get married, I, I, everything is okay, we are so happy, but because of my color, because of my tribe, because of my ethnicity, because of this, because of that, someone somewhere somehow is blocking it so badly, can I do it without them, and so on and so forth, and it depends who it is. It depends on how independent you are in terms of your ability to manage a family, and it also depends on who exactly it is who is being an obstacle and why they're being an obstacle. Sometimes there's nothing you can do about it. What happened? Allah closed the door. He shut it on me also when I was 18 years old, by the way. And I thank him for that, by the way. Why? Wherever he wanted me to go, I went. I'm talking of myself. I don't want to talk about others. Allah shut the door on me for one thing that I really wanted. And that was it. And I can tell you, I can let you in on this. My father told me, listen, you want to do it? I don't think it's appropriate for you. I don't think you're going to manage and cope. I don't think it's right for you. Not saying they're bad people, not saying this, not saying that. If you want to do it, get it done. But don't tell me that we didn't tell you. For me, that was a no. For me, that was a no. I was not prepared. I was reliant fully, financially on my father. Fully, totally, 100%. So, what did I do? I dropped it in a split second. That's what I did. Oh, you didn't even bother about trying, etc. Can I tell you something? I was fortunate. I lived in an age when there was no tick. And I lived in an age when there was no WhatsApp. And I lived in an age at that time where there were no even mobile phones. I'm talking of 1994, 93, 94. Yes. I look young, don't I? <laughs> no, I'm a grandfather, by the way. Of not one child, but two direct grandchildren. Alhamdulillah. Allahumma barik. So I can tell you, I thank Allah, not because I was... I felt it at the time, but I knew, no, no, no. Do you know what? That's my father. What has he not done for me in my life? This man stopping me, it's okay. And you know what I told him then? I went in from one good deed and I was proud of myself, so happy to see the smile on my parents' faces. I told him, you know what? Wherever you tell me to get married, I'll get married. That was another mistake. <laughs> because within half an hour, I was already almost engaged. And that's why I believe that, you know what, you want to get married, meet the person, see the person, talk to the person. It's no longer like it was before where everyone had an uncontaminated upbringing waiting for their person of marriage. And then when you come up, you're so clean and pure to go, good to go. You're not contaminated by the social media of the world because it didn't exist. The word social media was non-existent. So it worked, it worked because you know what, people grew up, boys and girls grew up and they, were, they grew up with the qualities required for someone to get married to them. And when they, when they grew up, no matter what, it would work because even if your father or mother, like what happened to me, and they said, you know what, we suggest you marry this person. You sure? If that makes you happy, I'm going to do it. That's it. That's what I said. That's what I said. Such a good boy. Wouldn't you like to have a son like me, guys? I regret having said that, man. In the sense that I should have said, no problem, let's consider it. Mashallah, well done, let's meet, let's talk. Let's, it could have, I could have avoided the, uh, things that may have happened later on in my life that I regretted. But it's okay, it's okay. Allah wanted something. But my brothers and sisters, look at how when Allah blocks something, we get upset not knowing that, hey, I've got a plan for you. Do you know this person, I'm talking of today, right? You're madly in love with them because that's one crisis is we already more than married to someone without the nikah and now we want to halalize it with our fathers and mothers. That's it. That's it. I'm coming in and telling my dad, you know, dad, and dad says, I know. Do you have someone in mind? Yes. Tell him the truth. I don't have him in mind. I have him on my bed. Astaghfirullah. That's what's happening. Tell him the truth. It's a fact of life. That's how far we've gotten. There's no point in being ashamed of what's happening in the sense that to talk about it. 
But we are sad that that's a, it's a reality. I know I deal with young boys and girls. Many of them way beyond what you would do as a husband and wife. And then they're saying, can I get married to him? Hey, you should have come and said this five years ago. Man, five years ago. And don't be ashamed. Tell him exactly what waters you're in. He says, no, you can't. You know why? They are Pakistani and you are Bengali. Have you heard that before? It happens. Today I was supposed to attend a wedding. May Allah grant them barakah and rahmah and sakina and mawadda. Today I was supposed to attend one interracial. And I said, I'm going to make an effort. But unfortunately or fortunately, I had to come here. And I was happy about it because I said, and I made a video for them, subhanallah. And why? Because I said, you know what, mashallah, at least your parents have finally, you know, agreed. So sometimes Allah doesn't give us something. Relax, take it easy. Take it in your stride. Perhaps Allah knows that your future with this particular person is not going to be as rosy as you think. So learn to let it go. I tell my children, do not get attached to anything you found on earth to the degree that when it's taken away by Allah, you become depressed. No matter who and what. If your attachment is to Allah, you won't be let down. When your attachment is to something you found on earth, you may have a problem. We're all attached, but to what level? To a level that if it were to be taken away from you, at least you know, inna lillahi wa inna ilayhi raji'un, and Allah will help you to continue and to grow and to go. So, my brothers and sisters, Allah Almighty favors us sometimes by taking us away from things. I can give you a ton of examples. You might have heard me say in the past that I know of someone who lost his job and kept applying and kept applying. And years later, he started up his own thing and made more money than the entire business of where he used to work before within a few months. And Allah kept him that way. Allah kept him that way for a few years. And Allah knew that I'm going to open your doors in such a way that you will never ever regret having waited. I can tell you the same about marriage. I know a sister who told me that I've been divorced four times, but I don't regret because when I married the fifth time, I found the king of my dreams. Don't look at me as though you want to marry five times. No, no, no. We need to realize it's just an example where I'm letting you know don't lose hope. Allah knows. So what? People will always tell you, oh, you're too old. It's okay. It's okay. My spouse is coming. But we have another quick problem that I can mention. When you say my spouse is coming, please make an effort towards it. You can't just sit back and say Allah will bring him. Allah will bring her. Do something about it. Someone needs to do something about it. Beloved parents who are here, you need to get up and smell the coffee and then go closer to it and check what type of coffee it is and then come and offer it to your daughter. Does it make sense? You need to. It's part of your duty. Because people are sitting at home, inshallah, when the right person, when Allah sends the right person, what are you doing about, about it? I'm making dua. Dua is a powerful component, but it's just a component. It's not the only thing. How would people know you even exist? It's true. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us assume the responsibilities that he has placed on our shoulders. I've always tried. Whenever I look at... I'm going to let you in on a secret, okay? Whenever I see young guys, I look at them and I tell myself, you know what, I've got so many daughters, man. And yeah, I promise you, I look at them as though, let's see what this guy is worth. And wallahi, if a guy is worth it, I open my mouth. Why? Because it's my responsibility. In some cultures, it's taboo. Let me tell you, we're living in a world where sometimes you need to put your culture aside and do the right thing. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make it easy for us. Have you shed tears asking Allah for something that you either needed, wanted, or that you lost and wanted to retrieve? Or you needed to have a situation that you desperately sought from Allah? If you have shed tears for that, you need to realize it's Allah's love for you that he brought you closer to him through a problem because the point is the closeness to Allah. If goodness brought you closer to Allah, it was a gift. And if something negative brought you closer to Allah, it was not a punishment, it's a gift of Allah. 
nothing that has happened to you in your life that brought you closer to Allah can be called a punishment. It's not. It was the mercy of Allah. I know of people who Allah tested by taking their children away. Allah make it easy for such people. Because it's one of the most difficult, most painful situations. You need sabr upon a level that I personally have not yet gone through. May Allah protect us all and make it easy for us. But when Allah has done that for you, I know of people who then found Allah as a result of the loss. Don't you think that was a point of mercy? Your little one is going to be in Jannah waiting for you. He was just a child. But Allah has just made sure that you go to Jannah too. People come to us and say, will I see my loved ones in Jannah? We normally say, inshallah, right? You know what's the true answer? Work hard, you'll see them there. Without that hard work, what do you expect? You're walking towards the other J, and he's in another J, subhanallah. You see? You say, well, I see my, this in Jannah and that person in Jannah. I've, I've heard the weirdest one ever. Weirdest one ever. Guess what? Will I be with my girlfriend in Jannah? <laughs> I promise you. I promise you. Are you serious? He said, yeah, because you know how people, people make it difficult. And sometimes parents and communities and societies make it very difficult for people to marry. You see, it's a topic on its own. It's a topic on its own. And it's not our topic this evening. But I want to let you know something. Please, bear Allah in mind. Without Allah... We cannot really achieve that true contentment and we will not be able to fulfill the purpose that we are on earth for. By the time death comes to us, we're just going to regret what happened in the past. Well, if we do, before the gharara comes, we are still fortunate. Sometimes we die suddenly. And what did you, how did you die? I remember a brother, may Allah grant him Jannah. His sons refused to do Janaza on him. And the reason is, he was a guy who looked very practicing. He passed away in a group of prostitutes with alcohol and everything else. And he died in that condition. And I tell you what, his own sons didn't want to do janaza. In fact, they didn't do janaza on him. They said, we thought he was a holy, pious guy reading five salah a day. Yet that holiness was actually to do with holes rather than with piety. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. So who would like Su'ul Khatima? One of the du'as you and I should be making is, Oh Allah, grant me a good death. Keep saying that. Allahumma inni as'aluka husn al Khatima. I am concerned about death. You should be concerned about death. I'm not scared and fearful and so on because I've tried to prepare to the best of my ability as a human being. And Allah knows that. And the same should apply to all of us. There is no option that you have but to go back to Allah. So help yourself by engaging in lots of istighfar and Allah will grant you the best. But Allah's mercy is He brings you closer to Him. He brings you closer to Him through difficulty and hardship many times. And when you see some people, their lives change just before they die. I want to give you one quick example. We spoke about the J and the Jade. You know what those stood, stood for? Jannah and Jahannam. We had a brother called Junaid Jamshed, rahmatullahi alayhi. You heard that name, some of you? I'll tell you what happened to him. He was a singer. And Allah wanted him to change his life before taking him away. And so suddenly his life changed to the shock of all those who knew him. His life changed, he began to call people towards Allah and his singing changed to Anashid. In Urdu and in whatever other language he might have known. And his life changed to the degree that people now knew him as a religious guy. And suddenly he passed away in a, in a plane crash. For me, it was a moment of pondering. Allah. Ya Allah. Perhaps it's a sign of the love of Allah. That this man's life, Allah knew I'm going to take him away on this date. So just a few years before that, we're going to change him, flip him. He's going to come back to the right path and then we take him away in, on the right path. How many are the opposite? Are they not there? The opposite. So all I need to do, oh Allah, grant me husnul khatima, grant me a good death and work towards it. If you've sinned, be embarrassed. Be embarrassed for your own sake, for the sake of Allah. Feel the remorse and the regret. Say, oh Allah, forgive me. 
I delivered a talk earlier. And I'm sure there are so many other talks online that you can listen to regarding repentance. It's a good thing. How do you know that it's a punishment or a point of mercy? Simple litmus test. Look at the condition of your heart. If it's brought you closer to Allah, it was never a punishment. It's the mercy of Allah. And if it drifted you away from Allah, it was a punishment even if it looks so positive. You suddenly got a wage increment or a huge business deal of so many million. If that made you make a trip to Mecca, build a masjid, drill a well, help the people, reach out to family, humble yourself. Ah, oh, that's the mercy of Allah. Nurun ala nur. Allah gave you the dunya and he's giving you the akhirah. You're preparing for it. Look at that. But if it was that you earned so much and you got so much and suddenly first thing, let's go to the nightclub, for example. Let's go and pub it out. Let's go and do whatever else. Let's go to the casinos. Let's see how best we can throw and blow and, and, and boast and brag. If that's the case, it cannot be the mercy of Allah. It's the opposite. And people say, but why would Allah do that to me when he gave me? Okay, let me explain why. Allah says that at some stage, in some people, in order to punish them, we gave them. Allah speaks about a previous nation. When they forgot Allah totally, Allah says, we opened the doors of this world for them totally. Why would Allah do that? Well, Allah says in the Quran, لا يغرنك تقلب الذين كفروا في البلاد متاع قليل Don't let the people who are disbelievers or distant from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala deceive you when they have a lot on earth. Allah says that is just for a short time we've given them. You know, sometimes you have a really, really good person. Allah says, well, we gave them their coupons were used on earth. We gave them a nice healthy life. They enjoyed beautiful holidays. We gave them nice children. We gave them lots of beauty. We gave them so on, on earth. When they come to the hereafter, Allah will tell them, your coupons are used. That's it. Your coupons are used. فَجَعَلْنَاهُ هَبَاءً مَنْثُورًا Allah says in Surah Al-Furqan, you know what? All your deeds, they're gone like ash. What? We didn't oppress you. We didn't harm you. You were a good person. Whatever we needed to give you, we gave it to you on earth. Look how much you enjoyed. So Allah says, those people, we gave them as a result of them forgetting us. And then Allah says, Hatta idha farihu bima utu, bagta, fa idha hum mublisun. When they became so immersed in what we gave them, and they forgot us even further, Allah says, we suddenly punished them with sudden punishment that overtook them. And they were confused. Why were they confused? The same reason I was mentioning. Because according to them, well, when I got, surely Allah must be happy with me. No, Allah gave Fir'aun and Qarun and destroyed them too. So Allah's given people because he's upset with them. That's why when Allah blesses you, oh Allah, bless me with goodness. And I can tell you, when do you know it's a blessing? Another simple litmus test. When your wealth and your achievement and your authority humbles you and brings you closer to Allah, it's a blessing from Allah. It's a mercy of Allah. But when Allah's given you good looks or anything else, Allah's given you intelligence, when that makes you arrogant and proud and makes you haughty and distances you from Allah, no matter how much of a blessing it looks like, it's not a blessing. That cannot be a blessing. And all of us, what do we want? When I was entering, when you guys were entering, I greeted a lot of you at the door. One of the brothers reminded me of a little talk that I might have delivered some time back. He says, Rabbana atina fi dunya hasana wa fil akhirati hasana wa qina adhab nar And I remembered that. And I'm saying it again here. Each one of us, don't we want the goodness of this world? I'd love it. Allah's created a natural inclination towards nice things. I want good clothes. I want good clothes. I want a nice house. I want a decent car. I want a lovely family. I want to be able to afford a few things, mashallah. That's okay. It's permissible. May Allah grant it to me and to you. Say, Amin. 
Mashallah, that was quite a loud Amin. You see, that's the thing. That's the thing. When we ask for dunya matters, everyone says, Amin, because we know. But when we say, Oh Allah, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala truly grant us goodness in this world and the next. Amin. Okay, Mashallah. So, we want that. It's a natural inclination. It's not wrong. If that comes while we're in the obedience of Allah, Alhamdulillah. And as it's coming, please give, give, share. Islam is the only religion on earth where it is a pillar of your faith to share what you have with those who don't have it if you have more than a certain amount. It's the only religion on earth that makes it a pillar of your faith to share what you have with those who don't have it when you have beyond a certain amount. No other religion has it as a pillar. Other faiths have encouraged you to give charity. You see, the word charity in English has an element of it being voluntary in the wording. Whereas zakat is, a, is not a charity in the true English sense, but rather it's the closest word, but it has an element of obligation in it that makes it different from a general charity. Allahu Akbar. It's amazing. So beyond zakat, give, give. Unfiq. Yabna Adama unfiq alayk. I love that hadith Qudsi where Allah is saying, Spend, O son of Adam, I will spend on you. Give, I give you. I've seen it in my life. Wallahi, I saw it yesterday. I gave a brother a perfume. Today, someone gave me two. I got them in my pocket. I'm about to give them to someone anyway. I give the two, I get four. I give the four, might not get anything back. But Allah will give me something else beyond that. But Alhamdulillah, that's how it works. I'm sure some of you have tested it and seen. It works. You want a thousand, give 500. But when you give the 500 and you don't get the thousand, don't come to me. Because Allah's already given you that which is beyond the thousand. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us barakah and blessings. So do you believe I've been here for 36 minutes? I have four minutes remaining. You see, it doesn't seem like, it's like 3.6 minutes. I just want to recap this evening. My brothers and sisters call out to Allah. The prophets of Allah, all of them, one after the other, called out to Allah. They cried to Allah. Allah says, we gave them. Listen to Yunus, alayhi salam. Yunus. Yunus. What is the English of Yunus? Jonah. Jonah. Yahya is John, but Jonah is Yunus. Allah mentions how he used to praise Allah every day. And one day, he was swallowed by a fish. I'm only mentioning what's in the Quran, okay? And then Allah says, فَلَوْلَا أَنَّهُ كَانَ مِنَ الْمُسَبِّحِينَ لَلَبِثَ فِي بَطْنِهِ إِلَى يَوْمِ يُبْعَثُونَ had he not been from among those who constantly did the tasbih and praised Allah in his life, he would have remained in the belly of that fish forever. But because he was praising, now you go into the books of Tafsir ibn Kathir, makes mention of something interesting and he says that it is reported that the, the voice of this man making tasbih used to be taken up by the angels every single day. The deeds are going up, right? On that particular day, the same voice in distress, calling out to Allah without telling Allah what to do. Imagine their level of piety was on another, another, another level. They didn't tell Allah what to do. They just said, oh Allah, I'm in distress. That, that was enough. Imagine you call someone and you say, there's a problem. That was, that's enough for your loved one. You're going to run. Where are you? You're not going to say, what is the problem and how do you like me to solve it? No. If they're yelling for help, that's it. You don't want to know what it is. I'm going to get myself there. So he just says, La ilaha illa anta subhanaka inni kuntu zalimin. He hadn't yet asked a thing. He didn't ask anything yet. He says, there is none worthy of worship besides you, O Allah. Indeed, I have wronged myself. I did something wrong. The story is long. Allah says, فَاسْتَجَبْنَا لَهُ So we responded. What did you respond to? He hadn't even asked what he wants. Allah responds to our needs without us actually mentioning them or articulating them or saying them. Because he knows what's in your heart. He knows exactly what you need better than you know actually. Subhanallah. 
So what did he say? He just praised Allah. And he said, oh Allah, forgive me. In fact, he says, Inni kuntu min I indeed did something. I was from among the wrongdoers. I did something wrong. And Allah says, Fastajabna lahu. And what did we do? Najjaynahu min al ghammi. We actually saved him and protected him from his anxiety and his, his stress that he had. Al ghamm. Ghamm is the worry. Allah says, we saved him. What does that show? That shows that a person who involves in something wrong, they, ha- they are overcome by worry. What was his wrong? It wasn't even that bad. It was that he went away from his people and he was upset. Yet he was supposed to call them towards Allah. But for something happened and he said, I'm going. And Allah says, he went away angrily. So he felt within himself that I've done something wrong. So he says, oh Allah, I did something wrong. Allah doesn't say he did do something wrong. Allah says he felt he did something wrong. It's it's an amazing story. But the bottom or the point is, look at how when he just opened his mouth, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala responded. It is said that the angel said, oh Allah, that voice that praises you every day from a certain place, today is in another place altogether under the sea or the water in the darkness in the belly of a fish and he's calling out to you in distress immediately that fish spat him out that's what happened Allah says najjaynahu min al-gham that was part of the gham is I'm in the belly of a fish Allah says, وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ Allahu Akbar. وَكَذَلِكَ نُنْجِ الْمُؤْمِنِينَ In a similar way, we save the believers. So yes, you might have to wait for a day, two days, three days, a month, two months, three months, but victory comes. Victory comes. I invite you to slowly improve yourself. Step by step, get closer to Allah. Don't ever let a day come when you're taking a step back. If you're getting closer and closer to Allah, even if it is an inch at a time, a millimeter at a time, wallahi, you're heading in the right direction. The minute you're taking a step back on your achievements, you're heading in the wrong direction. So let's try and be strong and Allah Almighty will grant us the goodness. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. My time is up. I've actually overshot by two minutes. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, grant us baraka in that two minutes. Aqulu qawli hadha wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad.